Who of you has tried online dating? Please, <laughs> raise your hands. See some over there. <laughs> no need to feel awkward. Millions and millions of people around the globe have done the exact same thing or are actively using online dating right now. And guess what? It works. Online dating is insanely popular. It's one in three relationships nowadays start online, making it the second biggest source of new relationships right after getting introduced to your new friends via your existing friends. Online dating originated in 1994 or 1995 with the registration of the websites Match.com and Kiss.com, which were both operated by the same guy. At that time, it was little more than the digitalization of marriage ads, which itself are not a new thing. They have been around since 1700, only a few years after newspapers first originated. So this desire for companionship is so strong in ourselves that it is pursued by various technological means, the newest of them being online dating. Of course, it gets criticized a lot for being casual, only about trophy hunting and quick intimacy. And I'm not here to defend these statements, because for the multitude of users, you're sure to find someone for whom these statements are true. What I do want to talk to you about today is that online dating works. And many people have looked into this, especially people like Cacioppo, Rosenfeld, and Thomas. They have digged through a lot of data, and I would like to share some of their results with you today. First, the marriages that originate online differ from their offline counterparts in three dimensions. The first one being that they're more diverse. And for the sake of data availability and measurability, we're oftentimes going to equate diversity with the rate of interracial marriages. Second, and perhaps surprising, the marriages that originate online tend to last longer. And it might come from that, that they have a higher marital satisfaction, which just means they're happier. These are interesting findings, but how can we make sense of them? This is what me and my friend and co-author, Josue Ortega, did during my PhD. We came up with an interesting illustration that can make sense of these observations, and I would like to share it with you. Meet Maria, and this is her network. It's a bunch of people she knows, her friends, colleagues, people at the gym, people she likes to hang out with, all people with whom romantic relationships could develop. For the sake of exposition, we're, I'm going to talk about heterosexual relationships, but all the arguments I make can readily be extended towards same-sex couples. So stars represent her female friends, whereas dots represent potential love interests. These person in Maria's network are randomly placed over the grid. Their position indicates how compatible they, they are to one another. So if two points are close to each other, the people get along really well. And if they are, for the sake of my argument, of opposite sex, they could be a good match and could make a great couple. There are many such networks out there, like Maria's. For instance, Paul's network. And these networks spend the entirety of our society. The sum of these networks is going to be more diverse and more heterogeneous than whatever you would have in your personal network. So, what we do now is we employ an algorithm and find out who should marry whom. And we do it like this. We just find the two symbols that are connected to each other and are closest to each other and remove them from the grid. Those are married and off the market. And then the next round appears. And so if we do that, we can now see who gets married to whom, and these are the resulting relationships. But isn't it strange? Paul and Maria are really close to each other. They're closer to one another than to anyone in their personal network. Yet, they don't end up to, with each other. And why is that? Because they don't know each other. And this is where online dating can step in. It can create new connections where previously there would not have been any. And therefore, bring together people and homogeneous networks. And now, we see again the algorithm employs and these, two, these three relationships develop. Maria gets married to Paul. They're really close to each other. They're, they're the best possible couple in this network, and therefore, they live happily ever after. It's a little simplification, of course, that we can pick them, pinpoint who are, is closest to one another, but algorithms in the real world 
of match of big online dating platforms don't do anything different. They're just more, they need to be a little bit more fancy in order to determine who is good for one, but it, they follow the same goal, to find out who is compatible with one another and make sure that these people end up together. You might find this a theoretical example, so let's look at something of a more real-world perspective. This is a graph originated from a Facebook friends, and we put some symbols in there. You see the blue dots, they just anonymize people, but focus on the yellow triangles. These are the relationships of this person that originated offline in everyday venues. And you see, they're very well embedded in a network structure. So the people that are clustered together, they have many connections in common, and this is how they're plotted there. Whereas the red, star red stars are not anywhere near the people in the network. These are the online dating relationships that this person encountered. And without online dating, as they are not anywhere near his friends, he would have never met them and not ended up with one of them for life. Many things have changed in our society and could be a factor that contributes toward the increase in diversity that we observe in everyday lives. Just look at this graph depicting interracial marriages among the newlyweds in the US. We see it follows a linear trend over time with a sp few spikes here and there. It's upward sloping, which is good because it brings together people and it starts to diverge at certain points from this linear trend. The first being at 1995 with the registration of Match.com and the origination of online dating. Again, in 2002 with the registration of Plenty of Fish and in 2012, when Tinder got developed. We see it pushes things upwards. And of course, many th as I said before, many things have changed. But online dating is one of those s candidates that can contribute towards integration and towards a more eg egalitarian society. But why should we care about diversity in the first place? Why is it important? Birds of a feather flock together is a popular English saying. In German, we would say, gleich und gleich gesellt sich gern. And I hear that in Greek, there is a saying that compares finding your loved ones to buying shoes which are made locally versus <laughs> venturing abroad for them or something. <laughs> I'm actually curious in how many languages sayings like this exist. If you have time, just tell me after the talk. We should care for what diversity can bring to our societies and the world we live in. For starters, by daily interacting with people of different cultural backgrounds, we can overcome prejudice. Direct contact and experience is the best way to eradicate prejudice and get to know and value a person beyond stereotypes. And as traveling may in cases be expensive, exploring the diversity that already exists within your cities and communities is a good second option. Don't you agree? And what else is that whom you marry can and will affect your socioeconomic status, because by establishing these new connections, you're more likely to hear of different job offers or which apartment just became available in a better neighborhood. So this diversity and an increase thereof can help you actually lead better lives, land your dream job, and be happier altogether. Of course, I'm not suggesting that online dating platforms like Tinder are gonna become the new LinkedIn. They're not made for this. But in a sense, they share some common characteristics. They both bring together people who would otherwise have a really, really hard time meeting one another. So I guess what I'm saying is this. Online dating is a suitable candidate to lead towards a more integrated society and can help us overcome gaps that we don't even know exist. And it need not be a dating platform. Think of couch surfing, eat with, Anything that allows you to mix and mingle with people you otherwise wouldn't have had a chance to encounter is a great way to meet new people, obviously, but also to broaden your horizon and get new experiences. Now I've been talking about online dating for a good 10 minutes, I guess, and I have a confession to make. I personally have never used online dating in my life. <laughs> I have met my girlfriend at a university party, 
She lived 25 minutes away from me, born and raised Austrian. So I'm not the right person to tell you about the romantic possibilities or the diversity outcomes that can come with online dating. But what I can tell you, based on my research, is this. Online dating platforms are really popular because by joining one of them, we join a distant, global network of friends that allows us to meet and date people beyond our restricted geographic areas. Isn't it great to live in a diverse society? You can go around, you can meet people, you can talk to an Indian person and ask them for a recipe of Murik Makani that has been tested in the family for generations. You can talk to people about international politics from the regions it actually concerns and get the facts straight from the source. I may not have met my partner on an online dating platform, but I do cherish my international friends. And I encourage you to explore this new land that has been opening up with a more multicultural condition in our everyday lives. And who knows, maybe the person you're meant to be with is to be found on an online dating platform or sitting right next to you or somewhere else in this audience hall. Thank you. <laughs>